ministry of laying on of hands. Well, pastor, stop there. Why do you call it a ministry? Because the laying on of hands is not just a single happening that takes place once in a blue moon. It is a spiritual operation that the Bible recommend you and I through the Holy Spirit to abide by. There are four important things that I want to share with you about the ministry of laying on of hands. When we speak about the laying on of hands, we are speaking about a mechanism for the blessing. Meaning this, Laying on of hands is for blessings. The ministry of laying on of hands is a spiritual ministry that requires a physical act. When God wants you blessed, there is a dimension that requires a touch, a physical touch. If I can only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. Now the second thing that you must understand with the ministry of laying on of hands. Through laying on of hands, healing is administered. Now God can heal you in a bedroom. God can heal you when you lay on the floor. And this has been proven time and time again. But there is a dimension where God requires this ministry to play its role where physical touch has to happen. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. The book of Mark chapter 16 verse 17 down to 18 the Bible said and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly, it will uh, by no means hurt them. Hear this. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, when a pastor, a man of God, stands and tells you about healing, he's not manipulating you. He's expressing what is in the word. There may be other people out there who may not agree with the word. It's okay as long as they respect your faith. It is written that uh, God gives us what we desire from him. And healing can be administered to us. He sends through the laying on of hands. So when they say, I lay hands on you in the name of Jesus Christ, the cancer disappear. Please align your faith. Do not simply say, oh, well, my doctor say. God can use a doctor to heal you. God can use your faith without any other physical agent to heal you. God cannot be contained. Are you hearing me? That's right. God is bigger than big, is greater than great. Amen. So do not say that God can only touch me through this vehicle. Right. I have seen God heal through many doctors. God healed people and make them well through pills. They became suddenly as prophetic point of contact. But are also included in the scriptures is that God heals his children through the laying on of hands. My hands is the hand of God. Say it. My hands are My the hands, hands of God. My hands are the hands of God. Now, not only that uh, you will lay hands on the sick, they will get well. I want to let you know if you are sick suffering of any type of disease deemed small or big curable or incurable i want to challenge your faith my name is af lukau oh yes i did not improvise myself i do not stand for myself i had my other planes i had my blueprint he pulled me out of it to serve him. I challenge your faith to draw a miracle. Catch it and let it be permanent. May you receive your healing in the name of Jesus.
Lift your hand wherever you are and say, Divine health is my portion. Divine health. Say it again. Divine health is my portion. Divine health is my portion. Now, please, quickly, if you can, have a seat. The third thing, which is a category, a vessel, through which we see the operation of the ministry of laying on of hands, is called consecration and conferring of authority. Meaning this, the ministry of laying on of hands is for consecration and it is also for conferring authority. Now this is a ceremonial level of the prophetic in this ministry where you are consecrated, separated for an assignment put in line officially for what you are born and called for. I receive it. Retune to the destiny of your life through the ministry of laying on of hands. Now, you can't really operate officially unless your ministry has been recognized and consecrated. We used to ask, who had laid hand on you? Now, this was not to casually say who had touched you. Who had laid hands on you is an imperative question to you. Why? Because unless you can answer it properly, we can't really trust you indeed. Who had laid hands on you here has nothing to do with who had prayed for you when you were not feeling well, when you had a toothache, when you had a headache. No, it has nothing to do with sickness. We are talking about the ceremonial prophetic dimension of establishing you, conferring authority over you, and consecrating you for what God has said. You don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm a pastor. As soon as you say, I'm a pastor, tomorrow you may wake up and change your mind. If you are born for it, from the womb of your mother, you are born for it. It will take time where you prove your ministry to a point where God speaks to his servant and say, now is the time. Publicly, you will be consecrated. Now, Jesus Christ's ministry needed that affirmation, the conferring of authority. That's why he was in the water of baptism. He was not baptized to die in sin and raise or resurrect with a holiness, new body, because he had never seen. But according to the wreath of all the high priests, he had to be introduced by another. Even Jesus Christ needed a John the Baptist. Right. Somebody that went before him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the earth. Even Jesus Christ had to be dipped or emerged in water by another who understood the implication spiritually and wanted to stay away, shying from that day. But Jesus Christ said, Let it be so, so the scriptures may be fulfilled. Amen. Are you hearing me? The third dimension here speaks of consecration and conferring authority. I know of many good people who are called by God under the sound of my voice, present, absent, who may not be watching today, may watch tomorrow. I know of many out there who have the element of God. Their calling is genuine. All they've been waiting for is that public consecration. Paul and Silas, the Bible say in the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 2 to 3, the Bible say as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, and laid hands on them. They did not just fast and pray, but they laid hands on them. They sent them away. Paul and Silas, while worshiping, 
the spirit of God say, now I want to open this small bracket and uh, plead with you not to resist the speaking of the Holy Ghost. It will destroy you completely. Now I may sympathize with you with the feeling of uh, being stripped naked when the spirit of God is speaking. Strip naked of your own secret and uh, the cover that you have in your life. Or strip naked in fear that uh, if I accept this, will I catch up with it? But I plead with you. Do not stand against the speaking of the Holy Spirit. Do not be part and parcel of those who shut the door to the Spirit. Do not be of those who openly out there or in secret believe that uh, it does not speak. When we're speaking here about the speaking, we are speaking about the prophetic. I love the way I said it. If you don't love it, allow me to enjoy it. When we're speaking about the speaking here, we're speaking about the prophetic. Amen. If you serve God and you're a child of God, you say it does not speak. Because every time you hear that God has spoken, you feel unwell. You feel it's too high as a child of God, as a pastor, or whatever the case may be. You have your own personal matter. Today, I plead with you to reconsider. Because from the book of Genesis to Revelation, step by step, we see how prophetic God is. And how God speaks. Saying in any way whatsoever that God does not speak as clean, as accurate as the word says, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, is denying your faith. Because your faith is based on what he said. And yet you did not have breakfast with him when he said that. You believe what he spoke about through his servant, the prophet. Here, Paul and Silas and the brethren are worshiping God and the spirit spoke. Now the spirit spoke here cannot be uh, downgraded to the fact that uh, one of them had an idea. Because today many will stand and say the Lord had led me or the Lord has spoken to me about a new teaching. He is the very same person who stands against the prophetic. And he tells you the Lord spoke to him. He is a crook on the pulpit. Do not believe that. Oh yes. If God speaks to you, well, the Lord spoke to me. We often time make reference to some ideas that we have. If I have this idea strong enough, I say it is God. God is bigger than my mind. Oh, yes. God is bigger than your mind. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God spoke. It was not Paul. It was on Silas. It is written in the word, Act 13, 2 to 3, that uh, as they ministered to the Lord, meaning worship and praising God and so forth, and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit did what? Said. If he said yesterday, he still says today. If you have an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the church or is saying to the church. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul, no Silas. Barnabas and Saul. For the work to which I have called them. Then I having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them. So laying on of hands is from consecration. On this altar we have seen people who have been consecrated to be pastors, to be bishop, to be resident pastors, to be ministers and leaders. That is what I am talking about. In the book of Numbers 27, 15 to 23, I want to read it so you may be in the scripture. Then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation who may go out before them and go in before them, who may lead them out and bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man in whom is 
the Spirit with capital, meaning the Holy Spirit, and lay your hand on him. There must be a Moses over your life that lays hand on you. Amen. He say, God speaking, he didn't just say, I chose Joshua, son of Nun, and I will blow my spirit and power over him. He said, no, lay your hand on him. Who had laid hand on you, by the way? I'm just passing by. Verse 18, and the Lord said to Moses, take Joshua the son of Nun with you, a man with, in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand on him. Set him before Leazar, the priest, and before all the congregation, and inaugurate him. Have you been inaugurated? Inaugurate him in the side. Forgive my confusion. I do not know who had given you that authority. He say, for none of them to question the authority of Joshua, please lay hands on him, inaugurate him in their sight. Verse 20, and you shall give some of your authority to him that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. You see that obedience comes because Moses transferred his authority. The level here of laying on of hands deals with uh, consecration and the conferring of authority. And this level can only take place through somebody who is higher. Because it is only a greater that uh, can bless a lesser according right. to the scriptures. Are you with me? Yeah. It is... Uh, only possible through somebody who has been established in authority higher than you, meaning your father, your mother, your guardian, a family leader, your priest, your pastor, somebody that God has set over you, your prophet, such a person can consecrate you, such a person can legally, both in the natural and the spiritual, confer authority over you. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. The Bible says, do not lay hands on anyone hastily, meaning too fast. The man of God is not making a suggestion. He's here forbidding his son to operate in a ministry of laying on of hands too quickly. Now, he was not saying don't pray for the sick too quickly. He was not here saying, don't bless people too quickly. He was in the dimension of consecration and conferring authority. Don't make them apostles too quickly. Don't establish them as uh, your assistant in the own cell too quickly. The last part of the ministry of laying on of hands is called impartation and transfer of spiritual power. This means the ministry of laying on of hands is for impartation and it is for the transfer of spiritual power. Every time somebody lays hands on you in this dimension, there is a spiritual transfer of power. It is an impartation that comes on you. Do you know that a wrong man laying hands on you will produce wrong things in your life? So you do not just take that beautiful head of yours and present it on the silver platter to anybody out there to lay hands. Mister, can I please see your CV? Can I do a due diligence on you? May I scan you in the spirit? May I know your roots? May I know who oh, yes. you are and whose you are before I give you my head that you may lay hands on me? You may be on the poster. They may call your name. You may carry title. I love the design on your business card, but I cannot just allow you to lay hands on me. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Arthur Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Arthur Lukau on all social media platforms at Arthur Lukau.